Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast, inside the business, buzz, and brilliance of Black entrepreneurs. Here is your host, Dr. Francis Richards. What happens in Vegas goes all over the world on Black Entrepreneur Experience, episode number 388. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black Entrepreneur Experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Do you want to increase your income, reduce your stress levels, and enjoy your success journey? If you said yes, then you are ready for our next guest, who is a transformational success coach, a podcast host, a motivational speaker, a mother, and the hats and titles go on and on. Welcome, Olivia T.M. Cook. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Richards. It's a pleasure to be here. It's honestly an honor. I've given our audience such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with our audience what you want them to know about you and your business? Okay, awesome. Well, I do wear a lot of hats. Most importantly for the listeners, I help people fit their goals into their lives. Um, I predominantly work with women, female entrepreneurs, and I help them enjoy their success journey while doing it. The way that I do that is looking at their schedule, going through and seeing where they have the time where they can be more effective and helping them set up systems that work for them. I also have a Christ-driven brand called, well, Christ-centered brand called Relentless Glory, as well as my podcast called The Empowered Woman, Badass and Unfiltered. So if you like to listen to podcasts, you can go listen to those over there. My whole life is about impact empowerment. So I'm on a journey to have the most impact as possible before over the next decade, for sure. Like that's just the goal, but for the entirety of my life, but that's really the the goal for the next 10 years. When you hear about transformational coach, break that down. What exactly is a transformational coach? Okay. So I help people get through the sticky situations that come up when they are leveling up in life. So it's a real true transformation, not from the exterior, but from the interior. Your exterior world will will really show what you have going on on the inside. Just like, you know, you're, you can tell someone's blessings by their fruits. You know, you can tell who they are. You can tell their life by the fruits of their life. And I really start by, okay, well, what is, why, why do you want to achieve this specific goal? And I, and I go through the, you know, journey of life or so the circle of life, I look at, you know, fitness, finances, health, all of those things, as well as your family, your relationships, personal development, you know, how you want to grow. One of the challenges that I wanted for myself recently was to increase my level, my capacity for stress. I also am working on my contentment. So examples of that is something that not isn't really a tangible thing, but it's a problem that you'll have unless you ne- unless you never address it. So just like that for other people, that and I help them with their secret addictions, the things that they don't want to tell people that they deal with, the things that they do to self-sabotage when they're going to the next level. So whether that be smoking marijuana, binge eating, porn, whatever that is, I'm not here to shame anybody, but I'm here to help them make systems so they no longer repeat those habits and they they can actually do them successfully. The negative self-talk is not something that we tolerate. And that's something that, that often holds people back. So it really depends on what the person's going through during that time. But that's what like a one-on-one transformation looks like with me is, you know, they come in, we set up their goals, they go up against their goals, and they talk to me about what's going on and what negative thoughts they're having. They become more self-aware, they become more present in the life that they live. Talk about your why. Why do you do what you do? Mm. Well, you know, recently since having this child, like, so I had no, I've been married for seven years. I had no idea that children would be such a motivator, but This is probably the best time in my life to have a child because of the situation that I'm in. So he has increased my motive, no other, because I want to leave a legacy for him. That's really something that I I want to provide for my son. 
and my other future children that I have, I'm, I'm only doing this one more time, the whole process of like being pregnant and then like having the baby. I, I'm not really about that life. I, <laughs> you know, honesty, but I love them when they get here. So that's one of my whys for sure. Two is, you know, I honestly, I want to see what it's like. I know that we have the power to live the lives that we really enjoy, that we want to create. We have certain lifestyle goals. My husband's in the the military. And when he gets out of the military, I want to be able to take off 10 weeks out of the year, five weeks in the summer, five weeks in the winter. That's a lifestyle goal that I want to have. I also, I really enjoy having meaningful conversations and grow through getting to know people. I also want to inspire other people that feel like they can't do things in life. I shared a post yesterday on my Facebook and my Instagram about how people will underestimate, will overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what they can do in 10. And 10 years ago, I was in an abusive relationship and I was 20 years old. It was the hardest, hardest year of my life. My father passed away and I had to pay for his funeral because we were dead broke. And I was the oldest child and I had to, I had to do it all. He didn't have insurance. And I worked third shift at a Waffle House and I was in an abusive relationship. And then eight years ago, I was still working third shift at a Waffle House two nights a week and working at another restaurant called California Dreaming and taking classes at school. And I was just really busy. And four years ago, I lost everything in a hurricane. But that does not mean that I can't live a life that I enjoy throughout the purpose. I enjoy, I, I enjoyed, except for when I was 20, I enjoyed all of my life, you know? So it's really about perspective as well, because time is so fleeting. It's the thing we don't own. I hope that that answered your question. You talked about legacy. Olivia, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? A person that had a life filled with love and that spread love and that helped bring other people up. You talked about the multiple hats that you're wearing. I want you to go a little deeper. You're a wife. You're a mother, literally a month old, your baby. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Talk about being a military wife, managing a business and wearing 17 plus hats. Honestly, it's all things I really enjoy. (laughs) So it's not like I have a a job at a fine. I manage a fine dining restaurant, right? I asked God, okay, do you really want me to do this? Is this really, is this really like a thing? Okay, well, I'm going to just send off this email and see what the VP and my regional manager says about me doing this. And then we'll just see how it goes. Two weeks later, I was hired on and I negotiated my salary and everything. And so that happened. And I was like, okay, well, this is what I have to do. And I'm like, okay, well, what is my goal for this? You know, so one, to increase my level of my capacity for stress. Two, to network with a lot of different individuals. There's Cardinals team here. There's Blues team here, you know? Um, there's a lot of a lot of different people here that I like to get to know and learn from. But I also, it's the company I work for. It has locations at the places that we're looking for whenever my husband goes to his next duty station. So I would be able to transfer in. I, I'm, I'm My goal is to stay with the company for a few more years. But that is, um, and and it's not a temporary, it's not a final destination. Again, you know, I'm really a believer that your current situation is not your final destination. You know, you work and you go and you aim to get where you really want to be. That's that with the job. Oh, and I just, I love, I love quality, high quality food and like people. (laughs) I just love people. Now, when it comes to, I also do a lot of volunteer work. So last year I was in charge of the summer sack lunch program at my church. And we gave food to an underserved area. I also like put on the Easter egg hunt at my church where we had 3000 eggs. We had like golden eggs with $50 gift cards in them and all this other cool stuff for the kids. No child left crying. Nope. I was so proud. It was our first one too. I was so proud. Being a military wife, I don't think it's for everybody. I think that you have to be willing to create a community wherever you live. And it is so, so important. And I would not have the life that I have now if it was not for my church community and the friends that I found in this area and me forcing myself to make a community. Now, people are fine. Some people are fine with having just the military based community. Some, but see me, I know that I know what I need. 
So I'm not saying this as it's what other people will need to have as a military spouse. It's what I need to feel like I belong in the area. But I've gotten to the point, and Maya Angelou talked about this. It's when you feel like you could be everywhere, but also need to be nowhere, basically. That's kind of how I feel too. Now, like I'll look at things that remind me of the of of South, the South, just like the nature and stuff like that. If I'm if I get a little like homesick, especially in the winter time, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Let me. I watched alligators last night. I watched alligators last night because I could see the Spanish moss and all the other stuff that's along with that area. So um, I do little things like that. But no, I, I definitely have come to the point now that I feel like I can be anywhere and be nowhere at the same time and still be complete. You talked about you had a loss in your family with your father and you talked about being in our sincere sympathy for that. You talked about being in an abusive relationship. That's trauma. I want you to speak specifically to someone in the audience. They're dealing with both, all, or their own trauma. What would you say? Make healing a priority. Because no matter where you go, no matter what you leave, you've got to take you with you. Make sure that whatever it is you need to tell yourself, you tell yourself to make sure you get through it. The way I look at life is different than a lot of people. I appreciate people while I have them because I understand that they can go so quickly. So I enjoy the time that I have with them and I, under, I I don't expect anybody to stay. Now, when the feelings come up of missing anyone that has passed or anyone I'm no longer connected to, I take time to honor those emotions. I acknowledge them and I let them go. I'm not here for like the toxic positivity of, oh, we'll just, just, Ignore it. You're you're happy. Be grateful. Acknowledge the dark side. Look in the dirty mirror. And I call the dirty mirror the parts of yourself that are so that you don't want to share with the world. You don't want to share with your closest friends. The parts that you, if you haven't faced, boring. those parts, look at those parts. And then that's where you start your healing. Talk about mental wellness and motherhood managing a business. I have so much help. I have an amazing community. I have no reason to complain. None whatsoever. And I say, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. And I constantly think of other women that are not. So when I was in labor, cause I was, I was induced, I had uh, pre-gestational diabetes and preeclampsia and like God brought me through all of that. I'm just, I was just, <laughs> I was in the hospital. I was induced on Friday, the 23rd of December. And I didn't go into active labor until Christmas morning. So most places they would have been like, oh no, let's just have a C-section. No, no, that's not what my people did because I had amazing healthcare. I had absolutely amazing. Like the parts that needed to be in place were in place. Amazing healthcare. My mom was able to come even though she has cancer. She stopped taking her chemo treatment so she could come down. My mom and my brother were here. My brother was here watching my dogs and cleaning, helping clean my house and get it ready for me because I had a million things going on. My husband was like running back and forth between the hospital and home and like, you know, just doing the things, making sure like we had more food than hospital food because there were short staff. Oh, it was a snowstorm. It was a snowstorm. (laughs) So like that was going on, but I had nothing but gratitude because I sat there and I thought, thought about all the help that I had. And I donate to an organization And I was reading over the pamphlet of like, it's a nonprofit for like underserved communities. And I I donated to a child in Haiti, but this, it was saying how 70% of women in developing countries don't have anyone to help them give birth. And I'm looking around at all of my medical team and all of these people here. And I, I was just like, I felt so much for them. And then the people that were in Boston that froze in that storm, like I was, I had so much compassion for all these other people. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm in a safe place. So I, I kept my mindset on gratitude while I was in that, when I was in my nursing position. And I also was just like, God is going to bring me through everything. Like my blood pressure went down like drastically and it freaked my family out. And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. God's got me. My child was born with his umbilical cord wrapped around his neck twice and they had to take him from us. And I was like, Oh, God didn't make me do that to just not have me have my kid. 
like I didn't even, I didn't let doubt get in my mind. I went to prayer for everything in that moment. Like I was so scared I was going to have to have a C-section, right? And I called my spiritual mother and I said, and this was like five o'clock in the morning. And she's, I think she called me. I was like, I need you to pray for me to not have a C-section. And she calls up all these other people at five o'clock in the morning for my church. And then get this, my church does a meal train for us and they bring us food. And I'm like, oh, these people can cook so well. They cook so well. So, I mean, and then when I got home, you know, my mom and my brother and my husband had set up like a welcome home thing for me. And like, we had food ready. I mean, I was really, really taken care of. I can't say how blessed that was. And then just the fact that like my husband wants to be an active parent and is an active parent and is such an amazing parent. I know that. So I don't know how single women do it. I would not be able to. And, you know, I knew I, I've been recording my podcast for two years. I know that what women need most is to be able to take time for themselves, whether it be five minutes, they need to be able to take time for the sick. The, the most successful women I know have a community and have time for themselves. All the other stuff gets figured out. You get a community and time for yourself and you do the work, it'll all be figured out. But man, I'm telling you that community is important. How do you build community? Be very intentional. You want them to look like what you want your future to look like. You want your, you need to know what your morals and your goals are and what your standards are and make sure that they, that's a reflection of that. One of the qualifications for me, for people that are in my community is I want them to make me want to be a better person. So that, cause I was being super picky in the beginning. And I mean, it's important to be picky. It's very important to be picky because everybody cannot have access to you having boundaries boundaries and establishing those boundaries early, you know, especially when you have friends from different places and stuff like that. And uh, my friends are all different, you know, and um, being able to know where your priorities lie, but yeah, building community really is about knowing what you want your future to look like and having that reflect that. Olivia, I want to step back for a moment. You talked about having all of this amazing help and you talked about how grateful that you are. Talk to that person in the audience. They don't have that help. How do they get to that level where they have community and they have help? Absolutely. Again, I would I would identify exactly what it is you want your life to look like. If you don't want to be drinking every night, don't hang out with people that drink every night. If you and, you know, where where do you go for this? You got to put yourself out there, especially if you're not from the area that you're in. You do have to be willing to put yourself out there. I'm not saying you need a whole bunch of friends. You just need a few quality people in your life. For me, finding my church has been the biggest life change for me and being, you know, willing to take to know what, you know, know what I need. Having a spiritual mother here that I can actually, that I I will, I will listen to (laughs) because I'll take everybody's advice. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, having different tiers of community, you know, having those, those people to give you advice, like mentors in your life, in different areas of life. So one of the things that I did do was I surrounded myself with people that were advanced in a specific area of their life. So one of my friends is a Lieutenant Colonel in the Air Force and she just operates at a very high level and she has a lot of stress on her life, but she has so much gratitude. So seeing that those developmental stages, that that was one of the things that really attracted me to her. Another friend that also works in upper management in IT. And, you know, she, she had a baby later on in life when she was almost, I think she was 39 when she had her, her son and she operates in, in things and striving for that. So If you don't have community now, start looking for exactly what you need to improve on and surround yourself, get close to the people that are where you want to be. You are the sum of the people that you spend the most time with. You really are. Also, I wanted, I knew I was going to be a mom at some point around this time. So I, I surrounded myself with people that had parenting styles that I like. I'm very picky on parenting styles because everybody don't, everybody doesn't raise their kids right. 
And I think that it's it's kind of bad that we don't actually call out parents for being bad parents until it's too late. I'm I'm just gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I know I'm kind of like new to this, but I'm just. <laughs> what is your parenting style? Well, right now it's literally just like I'm a robot because I'm literally just like waking this kid up and everything. But really, it's we. I'm religious. You know, people would say that I'm very spiritual. My husband's military, so we're very like. But I'm also like this, like we're very strategic. We have standards, we have expectations. So we have already talked about what we plan to do for his allowance, you know, doing like a system and, you know, having to do not just chores because you need to be a tidy person in general, you know, (laughs) but reading and not having a certain amount of screen time. I'm not, I'm not just giving my kid the tablet. I'm not doing that. I want them to be able to interact because I've noticed that a lot of people's children have to go through speech therapy. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I just think that the number has increased over the past decade. And I think that is a direct correlation to not having enough conversation with their caregivers. And that's not for every situation. There are exceptions to that rule. But I think that that's something that, um, you know, I I don't want to be hanging out with somebody that's constantly putting a phone in their kids, in their baby's hand. That's not interesting to me. I'm not just a dick. I'm not a dictator type of parent. I'm not the authoritarian, but I will listen. I will do a combination of soft parenting, but like at the same time, like there are some things that is what I say you need to just do like, cause I'm not, we're, I'm not having this kid run me. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I'm the adult here. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Advice you wish you had followed. You know, I, I learned a lot of things the hard way. But I realized really soon. So, okay, I started working at Waffle House when I was 19, right? And I was surrounded with women that were in their 40s. And life hit me in the face really, really fast when I was young. And I realized that um, there's, I don't know everything. I don't know anything. And I don't think that people know that people don't realize that they don't know anything like I I think that you don't know anything until you know you don't know anything I really I really believe that and I think that a lot of people in my generation like I'm 30 I think a lot of people don't grasp that concept because they have a judger's mindset and not a learner's mindset so I started developing a learner's mindset a lot sooner but so it's I take advice I just I can't say that there's something that I wish I would have done sooner because I wouldn't have learned the lessons that I needed to learn to get to where the point that I'm at. Cause I mean, you got to go through the mud. I mean, at least my stubborn self does. I'm stubborn. I know this about me. Like <laughs> there's just my whole family's stubborn, you know? So it's like, there's some things that I'm just like, okay, I should listen. And I mean, but I had to, I had to learn it that hard way because if I didn't, I wouldn't have really found the value in it. I learned a lot of my lessons really early, really early. Like when I came to like who to choose as a partner, shoes you know what places to not be at not not to be in situations that will cause you to be irresponsible what lesson did you learn in choosing a partner i think the test is really come when you have a child because i really think that your partner makes or breaks your experience with having a child and I learned that I'm I'm so grateful that I have a partner and a teammate that really wants to help me and be fully present in our like goals and everything. We're different people. We're very different. We've we've kept our individuality, but at the same time, we um this is advice that I got that I took, actually. But it was after I was married because, you know, n- no marriage starts out perfect. I wasn't acting right in marriage until I was three, three years married anyway. But uh, like I did, I got married three. Like I didn't know what being, my parents were divorced. I didn't know what being a wife was. I was so focused on like what I wanted to do. I was, I was not doing it right. But when he was deployed, 28, 29, well, 28, he was deployed. And I interviewed all of these marriage specialists and One of them told me, you know, to have a conscious marriage. And that's one where you become, you know, you are the best version of yourself and they're the best version of themselves. And 
you help each as individuals and as a team. So you help each other grow and you just want to make the other person happy because it makes things work and you understand that you're committed. You're absolutely in this thing and you're going to make it work and you're going to you're going to look in the dirty mirror of your marriage if you have to do that. And you understand that every time is not going to be an amazing time, but you just, you strive, you become a team, you become one. So we really worked on that. And we're, like I said, we don't get it perfect. We're far from perfect, but I am so grateful for him. And you take the good with the bad. Like, does he put his clothes in the hamper all the time? No, but are the bills paid? Yes. Does he love me? Does he tell me he loves me all the time? Yes. Does he allow me to grow and prosper in the way that that works best for me? Yes. So, you know, I, that's probably like some of the best advice. That and loving like Jesus does and forgiving like Jesus does. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person, living or not. You're having a conversation with this person. What are you saying and why? and name the person. Ooh, that's hard. Okay. A former friend, Lauren Howard, is who I will be talking to. Thank you so much for showing me what it is to be a good friend. Thank you for showing me what being a selfless servant is. There was a time that we were on our way back from the beach and you, we there was an accident that past and you stopped your car without hesitation because the first responders weren't there and you have dedicated your life with being a nurse to help save lives and while I'm so squeamish and that's not my expertise whatsoever people like you are needed in this world and I'm so grateful that we had the time that we had together What is your zone of genius? I would say it's people. (laughs) I'm really good at connecting with people. And I don't know if that's a zone of genius, but I'm just, I'm really good at that skill. That and creating strategies. Really just like looking at at things, strategic planning for for people's lives and also other things that are more complicated, you know, like business projects and stuff like that. Fill in the blank. Thank you, pandemic, because. Because I got to inspire so many people that were in a hard place. Let me tell you something. I evacuated from Hurricane Michael in 2018. We lost 80% of our belongings and our home and got relocated into the Midwest. And because of all of that, I was able to understand what attitude was. And start practicing that and understand that like life is so fleeting and it's really your habits that build your life. And so when the pandemic came around, I have to move to a different Airbnb hotel and I could just stay in my house <laughs> and, and find ways to connect with people and enjoy the outdoors. Cause a lot of people were outside, but I was, and I, I was loving that. So yeah, I, I just experienced a loss early er, on for it so I could show up and help. That is one thing I'm thankful for of it. Olivia, what is the one takeaway that you want this conversation to have for our audience? No matter where you are in life, you can create a life that you love and that you want to have. It will take work. You will have to develop as a person, but it is so worth it. What can we do right now to support Olivia T.M. Cook? Well, I, if you're listening to this podcast, you can go on over and listen to one of my podcasts on the Empowered Woman Badass and Unfiltered. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. That's really where I'm at. Or, you know, we can just connect on Facebook, wherever, whatever platform. I don't have to, you know, you you don't need to deal with so much of me. But wherever you interact, you can find me there. I want you to talk about being a hybrid entrepreneur. For those that don't know, you mentioned you work a full-time job. You run a business, a coaching business. You're a podcaster. You're a wife. You're a mother. 
you're a sister, you're a daughter, you're managing a fine dining restaurant that requires you to level up and lean in when you're there. All of this requires your undivided attention, but your Mm -hmm. attention is divided. Yet you said you want to learn how to deal with stress. Someone is listening and saying, whoa, Olivia is trying to stress herself out. How do you manage all of those hats, all of those balls, all of those roles? And I have to say this to the audience. If you're listening to this, you have to watch the video. Olivia is amazing. If she told me not that motherhood, because you you're going to look has haggard or stressed out, but you look absolutely amazing. I would have never known that her baby is one month old. So you have to watch the video. I don't say that often because podcast is about audio but you definitely want to watch the video. She looks stunning. And she mentioned she has lots of help, but I want her to go even deeper because people are saying this woman must be stressed to the max. And I'm telling you, you're absolutely gorgeous and you look like just a million dollars. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I'm Planning. Planning is the best thing. And I've also been doing this like for like this whole like stress thing for like the longest, but it's really my increasing my capacity for stress is with my job. I'm in like the worst position, you know, because I'm the front of house manager. So I'm in charge of the staff that I also, I used to work there as a server. So I'm in charge of the staff now that I used to be a coworker with. It's a little different, but they get that I have a high standard. So they also understand that like they all respect me which is a blessing. But then I've got my GM that I'm under and then I've got the district and the VP and all of these other people coming down on me. And then the guests that are crazy because I'm telling you the general public is crazy. So I've gotten really good at being yelled at and just being like, okay, they're crazy. But being present in the moment helps. I learned this from the vice president of global marketing operations from Google. And she she's a guest on my podcast. And she said, using your compartmentalization muscle is something you got to get good at. And so that's what I do. I use that muscle. I focus on where where I'm at, I'm there. I focus on being there. And I don't focus on the other stuff. Like I, when I get off my job, I'm not there. Now, granted, I have been like looking up the sales and keeping up with who's making what because I could just log on the app. But also like a crazy person that all I do is like work out, brunch and work. Like I do spend time with my family. I spend a lot of time with my family. My son's going to see me build something and know that it takes work ethic. I believe that work ethic is bought, is taught in the home. So he will definitely see me doing that. And I'm not saying working hard either. I, I'm telling work, do it, do something you enjoy. I enjoy everything that I do. I also know when to say no. I know when to turn off my phone and I give myself a break. I schedule things that work for me. When it comes to my podcast, I batch record all of my guest shows. So I do that in about three weeks. So I prepare that for a month. I mean, not a month, I'm sorry, for three months, my three month season. And then for my, I'm, I needed to increase my capacity for my podcast too. I need to increase more. So I'm going to do all of my batch filming for the month for my solo podcast in one day. And just, then just this, get it out that way. I have come up with my content strategy for the year. So each quarter I come up with my to-do list for each Sunday and what I need to be focused on. So that way I can focus on that. I know what I need to do when the world's going crazy and I find time because it's about finding and investing your time properly. I put timers on my social media. I don't allow myself to invest so much time into those platforms. I have a lot of mantras, a lot of mantras. So one of my mantras this year is say less, do more, consume less, produce more. Another one, because I used to be a former people pleaser, and I'm going to have to use this one for the rest of my life, I feel like, but it's, I only seek the approval of God. Another one, I, um, it is not my responsibility to manage other people's emotions. I get a lot, I get negative comments. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's their, that's how they feel. I don't bring on the extra stuff. People want to get mad at me. That's fine. That's not my job. My job is not to be liked. Again, my, my purpose is not about me. I know that a lot of the things that I say might 
some people. They might see how I do my life and be like, oh no, like I could never, don't compare yourself to me. I operate at a completely different level. I've been training for this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I coach people on how to set up systems that work for their life. I don't expect anybody to do what I do. I just want to show them how to do what they can do better. Yeah, I hope that that answered that. Olivia, if you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. That's so funny. I am I never think about that when I'm in like the interviewee seat. Oh, what is a five-year goal? Well, really it's like three-year goal. I would love to be a TEDx speaker. That is one of my major goals. I also want to have a New York Times bestselling book, not in the next three years, but like by the, by the time I'm 40, like that's one of my goals. I really am going after a specific lifestyle, that lifestyle where I get to spend time with my, my family when they're, cause I mean, this kid doesn't know I'm, I'm serious. Like this one month old has no idea who I am right now. Like he just knows that I feed him. He doesn't know how much time he can't tell time. He doesn't know like if I'm the one feeding him, he just knows he's getting fed. Right. And I think they don't, children don't really remember too much when they're like two, three years old. They just know if you're there and I will be here and I will make sure that I'm present when I am with him, but I will really be more in their lives when I am um, in, in the next five years. I'll be very active and and more so in the home and doing things. And they'll be seeing me work in my purpose, but I understand that everything is temporary. So I'm not going to be working like this forever. It's just the grind that I'm doing right now. And I want to say something in reference to, I love that you're an intentional parent and as a new parent, something that I want to tell parents, because I am a parent and a grandparent. And something that is so profound is that from the time, I believe it's when a woman become pregnant and someone can correct me on that at six months on to seven years, your child is a computer. So Mm -hmm. everything that your child is doing or your family, what they're involved in their environment all they're doing is absorbing that information. From eight on, they're just repeating everything. So they're just spitting out. So I say that to say it is so important, the decisions that we're making and how our kids are becoming these adults. And so those habits you talked about, that your habit is building your lifestyle. And so what is happening, a lot of people are dealing with, with their children as they become adults and a lot of trauma and a lot of things that are happening and they don't understand. And that's why I think it's a proverb that says, if you show me a seven-year-old, I'll show you a man or a woman because they've already developed. And so I'm saying this to the parents and our audience, we want to have these children grow up to be productive citizens and to be strong and to be on their own. And so that's so important that we understand how their lives is is formed. So they, after that, so you're living in your subconscious after seven years old, but in a conscious state. So that's so important. Yeah. Thank you for that. Again, I have a very much a learner's mindset too, when it comes to parenting, like I'm really, I don't have time to add on emotional stress in my life right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't have the capacity to add on additional, like myself, like the mental stuff, like, oh, am I doing this good enough? Negotiating with myself, negotiating my worth. I don't have time for that right now. You know, like, <laughs> I just got too much going on. So that's why I'm like, I'm willing to learn because when you're willing to learn, you're willing to let go of the ego. Because pride and the ego, I swear, like not the ego isn't bad. You should have it. But pride, I believe pride is of the devil and it will cause you to just not ask for help when you need help and just get in a deeper hole. So we've come to the part of our interview. It's called Rapid Round of Fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give me very quick answers. 
If there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready for the rapid round of fun? Yes, let's do it. What is your comfort food? French fries and a salad or like a baked potato and a salad. The last movie you saw? We watched a bunch of Harry Potter recently. My husband wanted to. You relax doing what? Watch. Okay. In the wintertime, it is watching nature shows. In the summertime, it's going on walks or just doing like a bubble bath and listening to positive music. So like, you know, gospel or anything like that. Um, And doing brain dumps, doing a lot, like a lot of reflective work helps me relax as well. And planning, planning helps me relax. Your favorite singer or rapper? Oh, rap wise. So I really like Lecrae lately. I like NF as far as like in the Christian genre of rappers. When it comes to like rap, like I've, I've listened to some crazy stuff. I like Boozy. I like Gucci. I like <laughs> such trashy music. I like Drake. There's even like some Yo Gotti that I like, but I'm I'm starting like now I've, that I've developed it like an identity wise, like there's some songs I'm just like, this is just too vulgar. I can't believe we listen to this. <laughs> as far as country goes, Luke Bryan, Luke, I'm, I'm a Luke Bryan fan. I like Katy Perry too. Usher, Tasha Cobbs Leonard and CC Wyans. Your favorite dance song. What's coming to my mind right now is Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody, but it's like not my favorite, but it's one of, it's up there. It's up there. What food do you eat every week, no matter what? Chicken. Workout or hit the couch? Workout. Olivia T.M. Cook, thank you for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let you go, I want you to share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and do business with you and feel free to leave all your social media handles. Awesome. So you can find me on Instagram at coach underscore live. You can find me on Facebook at coach live, but my personal is Olivia cook. You can find me on my website is Olivia TM cook.com. My TikTok is coach dot live. Live is spelled L I V. My YouTube channel is life hacks with live. The podcast is the empowered woman, badass and unfiltered. And uh, my Christ driven brand is relentless glory. Now I do have one link tree that I like to provide. And that has all of my social platforms on there. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. And I also have like a 20 minute strategy session as well as a a productivity planner. That's PDF download. If you're interested in that, I will also be launching a Facebook group. That's more like a subscription. It's accountability and productivity tips. And it's, I'll be launching it February 1st. So I don't know if this will come out before or after that, but that is something that'll be opening up quarterly because um, I'm really big on the community that I'm building in there. Thank you, Olivia. That's a wrap. Thank you for listening and subscribing to Black Entrepreneur Experience. We would love for you to leave a review and rating on iTunes and share with your friends. For show notes and more episodes, go to www.beepodcast.com. Join us next Wednesday. And remember, green is the new black. So keep your bank accounts and your business in the black.